In this video, I want to derive Euler's reflection formula. And Euler's reflection formula says this. It says that if you take gamma of z, the gamma function of z, and you multiply it by gamma of minus z, then uh, what you get is this. You get minus pi divided by z times sine of pi Z. And this is really this is really a cool formula because so far we've been mostly interested in, and mostly have our intuition built around the gamma function for positive values. I mean, we, we we're familiar with the factorial function, and, and and we kind of have some some nice intuition for just you know drawing a line through the points of that uh, factorial function. But what Euler's reflection formula is telling us is that uh, two things. One is that we can express gamma of minus z, so we can we can look at negative values of the gamma function. Um, by looking at the gamma function. So we, we can solve for gamma of minus z and it's equal to minus pi divided by z gamma z sine of pi z. And so that's that's really interesting because it tells us two things. Uh, one is that a gamma of minus z is going to blow up at values of zero and then whenever this sine pi z is equal to zero. And, and also that, you know, the, the, there's a very nice way of understanding the gamma function for negative values. Um, there are also a couple other ways of writing this that are that are sometimes more useful. So I'll I'll write those out up here, um, and they're all based around using the recurrence property of the gamma function. So another way of writing this, and probably one of the more common ways of writing this, is uh, as this: a gamma of one minus z times gamma of z is equal to pi divided by sine of pi z. So th this is just another way of writing this where you use the recurrence property. And this, this one ends up being usually a little bit more useful than this one over here. But it depends on, you know, the problem, what you're trying to do. So this is Euler's reflection formula. How do we prove that this is true? Well, it's actually not too bad. Um, first, I'll start off by reminding you of the Weierstrass product form of the gamma function. So we, we know that the uh, gamma function can be written as this, an infinite product e to the... Uh, minus gamma z divided by z times uh, the product from n equals 1 to infinity e to the z over n divided by 1 plus z over n. So so we, we, we know that this is true. Uh, but what next? What we can do is then just evaluate this left-hand side up here, gamma of z times gamma of minus z. And let's see what happens. So uh, when we multiply uh, those two together, then what do we get? Gamma of z, gamma of minus z. That's going to be equal to, let's write the whole thing out. So we'll have uh, e to the minus little gamma z. Uh, we have product n equals 1 to infinity e to the z over n divided by 1 plus z over n. This whole thing right here multiplied by e to the positive gamma z divided by minus z times another product, n equals 1 to infinity, e to the minus z over n divided by 1 minus z over n. Okay, perfect. And now we can just multiply these two together and see what we get. So uh, first things first, we're gonna we see that uh, all of these, all of these exponentials here are going to cancel out. So this uh, e to the minus gamma z, e to the gamma z cancel, as well as this e to the z n, e to the minus z n. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but what does that leave us with? That leaves us with gamma of z times gamma of minus z. It's equal to what? So we're going to have minus one over z squared. Uh, from the 1 over z's out in front. And then what? We're going to have a product, n equals 1 to infinity. And then we can multiply these two terms here together. And when we multiply these two together, what do we get? Well, we get 1 over 1 minus z squared over n squared. And this thing right here has a nice expression uh, in terms of sine. This is actually an infinite product for sine. So, so we have sine sine of x equal to x product n equals 1 to infinity 1 minus x squared over n squared pi squared. 
And there's a real nice intuitive way of understanding why this definition works. Uh, because really what this definition is, is doing is just multiplying all of the uh, factors that give the zeros of the sine function together. We have a, a, one, a, a 1 minus and a 1 plus uh, x over pi because there's zero, there are zeros at x equals pi. Same thing for 2 pi, 3 pi, so on and so forth. And so uh, this, this has a nice interpretation just as multiplying all of the zeros of the sine function together. And we can see that in the case where we, uh, where we set this argument here, uh, not equal to x, but equal to pi times x, and, and we, and we t look at the reciprocal, so one over both sides, then we exactly get this expression down here. And we exactly find, uh, exactly find what we want to find, which is that this guy right here is equal to minus pi, minus sign, get a pi from, uh, from here, times 1 over z sine of pi c. And so this is, this is, this is a very quick proof, because all, all, all we have to do is just use this Weierstrass definition of the gamma function. Um, but this result right here is actually really powerful. Uh, really, really powerful, and it comes up quite a bit. Uh, so I think I'll stop here. In the next video, I'm going to look at the general binomial theorem. And uh, when I look at that, I'm going to actually use this property. I'll do an example using this, uh, which will show just how important this property is and how useful it can be. Uh, and so I hope to see you in that video.